to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Huh? I'll let it go. Mike, after 2,000 episodes, you of all people know that your mailbags, they, they have, you know, they got f- different flourishes and. Sure. Sure, they do. <laughs> Prospector. <laughs> They you sure know the the the, uh, <laughs> the volume of laughter from Deucer's Alley this morning <laughs> is tremendous. That's the second show in a row where <laughs> it begins and um and there's just a just a faint whistle coming from an unknown location. Oh, Stinky Pete! That was the name. I could not remember <laughs> it. <laughs> that, that's a bad nickname, man. Stinky. Is Pete. he a Stinky Pete? Stinky the prospector? Stinky Pete was the Toy Story 2 prospector, <sighs> which... I feel like people are confused with what's happening yes. right now. No, they're not. They they know. They know that... Look, if you were at the live show, <laughs> you got you heard full details because we did a Q&A and people wanted to know about... Um, they wanted to know about my tooth and mm-hmm. getting my tooth knocked out, and so I explained the whole sit- situation... <laughs> And I told them occasionally the fake tooth that I now have in my mouth as a temp. It, it's known to whistle. Right. Just unexpectedly from every once in a while, like an old timey prospector. Yeah. Stinky Pete hosting the show. Which, I mean, I I don't, maybe it's something I thought about a long time ago, but I had forgotten about. I'm now putting it together of woody's gang in toy story 2 and you got this guy named stinky pete and you wonder why this guy's a little bit salty you're calling him stinky pete that's get bo- in the box yeah no you get uh you grow up with stinky pete nickname you're you're probably upset uh we have a mock draft on today's episode in fact we have nearly the entire team uh in the mock draft so we've got the falcon and uh al borland we've got uh, Brooksy in the mock draft. We've got our Borg and Betts boys. Yeah, Borg and Betts are in there. The Ram Scallions in there, and um, the Elder Bald Man, at which the, we call Papa Josh. Yeah, he's at the turn. And uh, so we've we've got everybody in the mock draft. So it should be a good one today. A two flex mock, our final mock draft before the season begins. So um i had sent out a little we had sent oh out gosh. an email yeah, yesterday one week today's thursday yeah one it's a week. week it's a week from today yep you've it's like hallelujah your heart, it's like your heart rate went up it did it did i i'm uh you know every year we get to a are point, you working out <laughs> <laughs> we get to a point which is usually week 18 which is like okay football and then we get to a point which is about two weeks ago which is like okay come on football mm-hmm. i need it i need it in my veins uh, very excited for week one. One week, one week, and a lot of drafts happening this weekend. A lot of drafts. So uh, make sure you're ready. UltimateDraftKit.com, and then we want to invite you to be part of the Megala Bowl, and that is MegalaBowl.com. That's our tournament style super league, and we are up over almost just above fifteen thousand now. It's your chance to win a listener league spot and a you uh, an ultimate tier membership for life. Drafts are going to be the 31st of August through the 4th of September. Megalobowl.com. How's the voice? Are you are you able to? Okay. Oh. Be careful. Mega. Okay. Yeah, Mega. Hold on. Just... All right. You don't want to look. Sometimes the hamstring feels okay, and then you get out there at full speed, and you're back on the IR. What's the I re-injury? Think I think I'm all right. Take right it now. easy. Re-injury rate on vocal cords. Megala. I don't vocal know. cords. We'll get we'll get bets on that. All right. Let's jump into some news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, well, well. Mike is shaking his head because he knows that somebody put their foot in their mouth. And that man, it's Zach Taylor. Uh, After returning to practice this past weekend, Jamar Chase did not practice on Wednesday. And Zach Taylor is now calling it day to day because Zach Taylor came out and said, oh, yeah, he's going to be practicing, blah, 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 blah. I've never seen day to day 
referred to without an injury. This has, this is just like it's a situation that's yeah. that's day to day. And I guess it's true because he has every day he has no idea if Jamar Chase will be there. We we certainly I think we all move Jamar Chase's risk rating up. Uh, you know, it's, it's what's the panic level one through ten. I would say it's at a seven for where Whoa. he's being drafted. Okay. I, I'm not worried about Jamar Chase on the course of the season. I don't think he's going to be a bad draft pick, but I do. It feels like there is a legitimate chance he's not playing football next Sunday. Yep. I'm it's super. Really soon. Super excited for my dynasty squad, but, uh, guys, week one to not have Jamar or Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. Also, you can see the frustration with uh, John Lynch. Oh man, what a, Who, who's like what a dummy? Sorry, he's like I'm not going to talk about it, but at some point you got to play. Like you yeah. can tell this guy is Brandon Ayuk so sent, frustrated. He sent a message and they immediately said, "John, sometimes you got to pay." Ooh, I, look at look at Dallas. Just take a look. Take a look at the Cowboys. They played their game of chicken, where the report came out that CD in his camp they were at 34. That's what the they whole wanted. entire time. They just said, and, and the Cowboys are like, how about 31? How about 34? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. How about this? How about, how about 31 and a half? How about 34? <laughs> and then they get to the season. They're like, hey, CD, we got a great idea. How about 34? And they're like, yeah, you know man, what? That deal. Is, we got, you got yourself a gosh darn deal over here. It's Give so, the man his money. It's so funny. because You're going to do it. We talked about this a month ago <laughs> where it's like, you're going to give – you're going to give CD every single penny he wants. Every single one. We all yes. know. The whole world knows he's going to get every dollar he wants. Yeah. So do it where he can be participating and, you know, with, with the team oh, and man. practicing and, and like you're hurting your franchise. And now we Lynch, have football they, 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 so soon. Lynch, the GM of the Niners, he was so frustrated on, I want to say on the stand. That's what it, <laughs> that's what it felt like. His press conference, he was so frustrated being like, he's got it. He's he's at some point he's got to play. It's like this is up to you. This is your. <laughs> if we're all trying to find the guy <laughs> right. who's responsible for this, like he wants to he wants to play, and there are other uh, teams. Well, I mean, but look, there are he, other teams that are willing to pay him now to play now. I don't agree with you. Oh, I that. don't agree with you. It, it, Jamar Chase has two years left on his deal. Brandon Ayuk has one year left on his deal. So yes, it is. It's still it, it's still a two way street. It's still a decision that. Brandon and Uke makes that he believes is in his best interest and the teams are making in their what they believe is their best interest and and you know when you're under contract it's still a debate I mean it's not just like you know how many years under contract can you be where it's the team's fault I mean you're Jamar Chase has two more years under contract which, yeah with with the Jamar Chase situation I I understand it a little bit more now that that second year would be the fifth year option but the you know this is one of those situations where this is how the NFL works. You, uh, you know, a decade ago, uh, 15 years ago, when people were holding out, it's like, well, you signed this contract. It's like, no, this is this is how contracts at the NFL work. If you're underpaid and undervalued and you're near the end of your contract, you get an extension. That's, that, is, that is normal, you know, uh, operation. I, but, see, I don't expect these to end the same way. And so that's where I would disagree. I don't. I think that Jamar Chase will play football without a contract, and I think Brandon Ayuk will play football without a contract. Hold out, Brandon. That's what I think is <laughs> going to happen at this point. And uh, I think that you know, yeah, I remember this with Arizona. Anquan Bolden did it twice. Held out the whole off season, didn't get a deal, and played. I mean, it, 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 it. They should pay these guys. I'm not saying they shouldn't. They're worth the money. And guess what? It's always worth doing it now. Like, the now is cheaper than the later. Yes. Like, it always is. DJ Moore just got a deal because the team saw that. And and it is – like, Jamar Chase isn't getting paid more if after this season. I mean, that's silly. It, it's going to happen. And what do you want Jamar Chase to do on the field? Do you want him to go out and have the best season of his career? I think you do. <laughs> right. No, let's, let's pull him. Let's pull him uh, before the touchdown so we don't pay him more. I mean, it's – it's counterproductive, but we did see this. This happened last year. We just did it. Jefferson just did this. Jefferson wanted money, held out for a little while, didn't get his money, played the season, got paid his money. And I, I do think with, with Chase, that seems like the path. With Ayuk, this is, this is silly because he has had offers from other teams that are just waiting for the Niners to – that's you know, fair. To, yeah. to do something. To trade or not trade. And and 
at this point with Ayuk, Mike, how are you treating the draft pick? Because he it's went. Brutal. We had a listener league draft yesterday, and he kind of lingered a little bit longer in the draft, and then he went. And you know, is he a Steeler? Is he a Forty Nine er? Is he uh, behind the eight ball in preparation? Like that. Right. This is one of the reasons why I I. The 49ers have the personnel to repeat in the division and go back to the Super Bowl. But there's also just the NFL is so wide open and competitive and the emotions of them losing in the Super Bowl, like that is hard. It is rare to be able to do that again. And now you have this drama with Ayuk and, you know, one injury or one problem. It's hard to do it over and over again. And this is just adding to the pressure. The Ayuk situation at this point feels more dire because he is not even showing up like Jamar did the Jamar heard his coach say yeah we we expect him to play week one and he said oh you do because I'll show up to practice but I'm not going to practice I'm just going to be in these clothes so you can't find me uh where Brandon Ayuk is missing his the fine for the first one is 6.4k that goes up to 11.2 should he skip the next one so on and so on within a uh, a maximum fine of up to 45,000 almost 46 I have the solution. Grand I know day. what to do. What do you got? Ayuk goes to Bengals practice, Chase goes to 49ers practice. <laughs> oh, I would not like that. I would I would very much not like Chase to be part of the 49ers. Mm, they can't just swap. No. Pay the other guy. All right. We did. Uh, we reported that this was likely to happen, but some actual reports came out. Rashi Rice not expected to be put on the commissioner's exempt list. Which means they're going to let the entire legal procedure play out before they make a decision on NFL punishment. You would uh, you would expect that they'll be able to push that beyond the season. It does add a little bit of... Now, I don't know. Maybe you know more information, Jason. But if it were to play out during the season, I doubt the NFL is going to delay a punishment. So if it did come Correct. to a conclusion... If it came to a conclusion, you could just all of a sudden be without Rashi Rice. Yeah, I think we had this with like Zeke, right? Wasn't the yes. where where we were going into an off season and we thought he was going to miss time early was in the year. He on a boat. I remember him on a boat. He was doing very inappropriate things. Yes, on a boat. By uh, maybe. Inter where was the boat? Was it international I, waters? I think it was. He, I don't. Actually, okay. I don't remember. I don't want to speak at a turn. I think there was a boat involved. All right, so Jason, you <laughs> Amy's like you said, very, con very convinced about this boat. Now you you did mention. Uh, Are you thinking about the Giants' boat picture? No, where no. It was all, I, the I whole still team, think Zeke was on a boat, man. The, um, whole, the whole Giants team on the boat. Totally impossible to figure out whether this is a fact. <laughs> Just speculation. I'm googling about, boat and I'm not finding anything. Just look for boats from the past. <laughs> Love boat. But to Jason's point, Rice, we think it could get delayed. Um, further, but that that's how it I'm is moving. a variable in play. It is, which also factors into how you might view Worthy and Hollywood and those guys. But so. the the if it happens, it would be much later in the season, I believe. So I'm drafting him like he's going to play the whole season because if I get the first half or whatever with Rasheed Rice, and then I have to figure it out at the end. August that's fine. Twenty second, twenty seventeen. Is it a boat? The NFL has announced the suspension of Ezekiel Elliott. From a boat. Who partied on boat. Oh! On, on Cowboys is. off day amid suspension appeal. So the boat wasn't involved in the uh, incident. This guy's, it's where he spent his appeal. This is his boat memory over here. Mm. In great, <laughs> incredible work. I know boats. I know <laughs> Everything that's ever happened on a boat. Now, was this like a yacht, I would imagine? It was a party boat. Okay. I, I'm sure it was a yacht. All right. Yeah. They would have right. called it a yacht. It's a boat. Jacoby Brissett and Russell Wilson have been named the week one starters for their respective teams. If you want to choose a new sacrificial baby, I yeah. believe Jacoby Brissett is willing to accept that role. Yeah, the offensive line there for the Patriots is bad, and so Jacoby Brissett will not be the long-term starter. There, this is a you know the the schedule is not easy for the Patriots to start the year, and you've got. You you've got to set your incoming rookie up for success. I I think this is the this is right probably call. the right move. I agree. Yeah, this team is not ready to compete today, so I'm I'm with you. Like at least Denver, I think they have some personnel. They had a run last year, putting Bo Nix in there, best chance to win. Um, so yeah, I I agree with you. 
Yeah, and then the Russell Wilson starter. That that was, I think, everyone's expectation from the get-go. Tomlin was pretty clear that he was in yeah. pole position from the beginning. Nothing changed, so he will be the starter. And, um, you know, they've got that, that bye week in the middle of the year. Maybe they could make a change later. But it's just one of those things where I expect the Steelers to be above 500 because they always are. Yeah. And if that's the case, you're not going to have Tomlin want to have the uh, turmoil in the locker room of – quarterback questions I, mean, I think he'll squash things early and often I'm disappointed that it's not Fields because I would like to see Mike Tomlin sideline reactions to Justin Fields <laughs> on a regular basis I want to see I, those eyes roll I, into the back of his head I think you'll with get some every with Russ. fumble and random uh toss into the stands uh we got Deontay Foreman back on the Browns yeah all right as expected he re-signed we've got the Chiefs signing yep. Samaj P. Ryan. Yeah, so running back who, who caught 50 passes last on year. On the Broncos. He is now on the Chiefs. Uh, if you had not seen it, there's been some stuff scattering out here about Clyde Edwards Alaire having uh, massive, massive difficulties with mental health and some PTSD things going on. Uh, I, I don't have all the information on it. He had it, been but, in and out of like facilities yeah, like, to like, help him. And that is he's really struggling right yeah. now. So Samaj P. Ryan is he's he's a late round dart throw that I think is is okay to throw. You so, should view him like uh, McKinnon. Yeah, I hope he bit. is less than McKinnon for for Pacheco's, Pacheco's sake. Um, and I do think he had less juice than McKinnon. He did, you know, P. Ryan. Um, he was okay last year, you know, 50 receptions, but um, not explosive. And then it, it does appear, digging deeper, that this was a yacht party. Um, it was not just a boat. It was a yacht back in 2007. Oh, we're going back That's, to that? Yeah, I just wanted to confirm what matters. <laughs> All right. Uh, Speaking of what matters, Jason, Jaron Hall was cut by the Minnesota Vikings. He was one of their backup quarterbacks, mm -hmm. and they brought in. Speaking of stinky Pete, they brought in Brett Rippin farts. farts. Yes, yes. I, I hope he. I hope Sam Darnold hope is ripping them on the oh, field. Man. Rip them farts. I, I, I think I tweeted something this morning. Like I don't know what it uh, says about my career and the choices <laughs> I've made, my life accomplishments. That a bit part player like Brett Rippin leads to us being tagged a million times yep. on X uh, about the player, but. uh here we are, Brett Rippin, back in the league just for the show. I'm sure he is ready and able to rip <laughs> some farts. Oh, yeah. So um, we are going to take <laughs> a break here. By the way, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break, and then we're going to jump right into our final mock draft of the year. Now, I did mention uh, before we jump in here that all of our staff is participating in this mock draft, uh, the majority of them, and I have it on good authority that there is already a good deal of behind-the-scenes panic and tilting taking place here. And the important thing to remember, guys, is that it's only half a million, maybe a million people that are going to see what you did in this draft. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Again, no pressure. First pick in the draft goes to the Falcon, who can kick things off now. I am at three. Mike is at seven. Jason at the 10 spot. It is a 12-team mock draft. It's full PPR. Full PPR. Thank you, Jason. Didn't know that till just now. <laughs> well, um, you are on the clock, so you're welcome. Two running back two wide receiver, and two flex. So we are uh, full PPR with two flex spots, so a little bit different than we have done recently. Uh, the first pick was C.D. Lamb. The second pick off the board, Christian McCaffrey to producer Borland. That is going to make my selection rather easy. The full PPR and the two flex. Um, you know, I've been known to dabble in a little Brees Hall at the three or four spot. You be dabbling. I've been dabbling, but not today. Today it's going to be a very easy pick for me All right. with CMC off the board. Tyreek Hill is going to be my first selection. Amon Ross St. Brown goes at 104. I have I've also kind of been curious, guys, about 
whether you're willing to promote Amon Ra in your in your minds to be with that top tier group. Like I've thought a little bit more about it this off season. Like Amon Ra in a full PPR might belong yes. with C D and Tyreek. Uh definitely in the same tier is chase yeah in, in a in a full ppr i mean he's so consistent he is the he is the passing offense for that team uh, and and full ppr i think does push him up at half ppr he's still not the explosive downfield threat that that tyreek and, and cd and even chase are so i that to me is the tiebreaker is is scoring format all right, Brooksy went with Bijan at 105, and then Brees Hall off the board to Betsy at 106. So I have Tyreek. Mike is on the clock with the 107. And this is somehow brutal. Of uh, We had gotten to the point where it felt very comfortable taking Jamar Chase. Uh, with bypassing Justin Jefferson, if you're somehow here and Chase is there, that's an easy pick. The situation that is brewing – like we said, we we've all raised his risk rating in the ultimate draft kit. I what about Garrett Wilson? I just i i can see i can see that type of a movement, but it also that's I mean that is playing super scared. Of can Garrett Wilson get to the elite echelon that has Jamar Chase? And I'm still going to take him. I'm going to take Jamar, um, and. Really hope that he puts some pads on. Well, he still has a uh, 87 and a half receiving line for week one on the sleeper picks against New England. So hopefully uh, we get to see him out on the field in week one. And if not week one, very soon after that, we have uh, Mike with Chase. And then Jason made a weird face in my periphery. He's on the clock at 110. It went Chase. A.J. Brown and Gibbs. Now, I think Jason might not want to be staring down Jefferson here. I don't. But I feel like in a full PPR, this is a this is a dude. This is a great pick. Be Rippin. <laughs> well, now that Rippin farts is on the team, uh, Justin. He's Jefferson. in the locker room, and that's where they're really dangerous. Oh, yeah, yeah. Open air, you're that's okay. A, that's it, a hot box. It's um. It, th this is a spot that I don't personally want to be. I I still worry about Justin Jefferson's capped upside now I do think obviously he's the best wide receiver in the league or one of the three best wide receivers in the league uh, and between the 20s in a full PPR he's going to get massive volume so I will take Justin Jefferson but I guess in in my world there's a break of the specific nine people that went ahead that I would much prefer. really okay. like like I would much Even emotionally prefer. you're not feeling as good as the pick could turn out correct yes uh, obviously, it's weird well, to love what that. a world. I love that at one ten. I am, yeah. What I, a world. I'm kind of Jefferson and and Garrett Wilson in particular. I'm kind of rising on, on them and feeling very content taking them now. Imagine being at one ten, and the best wide receiver in football drops to you. You're like, eh, I don't know. In full PPR. Yeah. Right. In full PPR. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, it, it's a great. I, pick. I get it. I get it. Um, look, I I did take Justin Jefferson. Right. I I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, but deeper. I saw your face. That's true. The face it was, was on stinky face. The face was unhappy. Um, Garrett Wilson went next to to Kyle. Makes sense. And then we got a back to back wide receivers uh, from Papa Josh at the end of the round and beginning the second round. Harrison and Puka very well could be two hundred plus receptions between those guys. Full PPR. That hairline shouts low T. <laughs> that's why he took those two wide receivers nice mike yeah um kyle went with you bald idiot <laughs> it Eat took it. me a second to, to, uh, i was trying to make sure sorry, sorry. there wasn't like uh, like puka's hairline was oh it no Marvin Harrison's no hairline? no 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 those guys are luscious locks this is a papa Josh well we know that attack. a rookie can come out and and it and not like, yeah shout out yeah mr perryman yeah yeah, yeah. um Jonathan Taylor goes at 202 to Kyle, so he's got the Wilson Taylor combination. Jason, back on the clock. I haven't seen a bitter beer face from you yet. Are you no, okay? This one is pretty easy. In fact, um, when I was on the clock in the first round, this player was in consideration. I have risen recently. You've got to make decisions. It's draft time, and you've got to, you know, there's there's certain guys like Saquon Barkley who you're not sure, like, is it going to work out? Is he going to be vultured on the goal line? I believe. Saquon Barkley is a great running back, and he is on a, this, he's on a great. This is a significant change. This he's, is a significant change. He's a 
He's a great running back behind a great offensive line for what I think is a great offense. Okay. So okay. No, uh, we're dealing with this right now. Okay. okay. We're dealing with this because, first of all, if you want to watch this draft, I suggest you do it on YouTube because you can see the draft board, um, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to follow along. But this is this is a problem for me because we came in here yesterday with the punter news, the punt return news about Kyron. Mm -hmm. And Jason was here to calm the fears. He was here to say we're really – he's always viewed Kyron the exact same way. And, you know, I talked about a duck costume, right? You put another item on, eventually you yeah, look like a duck. Yeah. Jason just put the freaking duck hat on. He gave me a duck hat. Like you gave you you factor into the narrative now. Your decision of Barkley over Kyron right here right now is one more thing for me to doubt. Now I don't know if this is just four <laughs> D chess you're playing and you want me to feel bad about the guy I got on my team, but you going Barkley over Kyron. I asked you that question verbatim yesterday, and you said Kyron Williams. You in our league of record, which is a keeper league, you had Saquon Barkley and traded him for Kyron and a move up of a few spots, and have been regretting it. So I have how been, do you feel I've in been this nervous moment about it. that yeah. I took Barkley? Does it make you feel bad? I, I feel like you did this to hurt me, <laughs> to make me feel bad. I don't know, man. We'll never know. But I do. I will say this. <laughs> we'll for, for the, for how, the, how will we find we, out we, even? We'll never know. For the <laughs> listeners, like to me, the difference between Kyron Williams, Saquon Barkley, I'll throw Jonathan Taylor in there as well, they're, they're – these are all good picks, good players. I will. I, I think that Kyron might have the strongest ceiling, and we saw his ceiling last year when he was the running back two in a points-per-game basis, but he also has some flags that, you know, you, you brought them up yesterday. They're concerning for you. I'm not concerned to the degree. Like, I would have been just as happy if I took Kyron there. The truth is I take Kyron in a lot of these drafts, and Barkley, I wanted to talk about, I wanted to say that I believe he's going to be really good this year. You got that chance. You took him. And then uh, the Rapscallion had Gibbs in the first round, went A-chan in the second. Ooh, yeah. So I don't know if that – that's not high T, though. Gibbs yeah. and A-chan don't fit into the high T category. No, they don't. They're not big they're body, smaller. 300 that's like lower case carry. T. That's yeah. lowercase T. Yeah, that's baby, baby boy T. <laughs> uh, Kyron goes at 205. And, Mike, you're back on the clock. Jamar Chase on the roster already. So uh, I think Ayuk is the pick. T. <laughs> <laughs> you're just willing to – your dynasty uh, wide receivers into existence. If I were to go running back, this is where I I would take Isaiah Pacheco. People, you know, the, you can. I've seen different reactions to P. Ryan getting on the team. To me, I'm. It's like a slight move down for Pacheco. It's not a a, a huge movement for me. Uh, but I'm gonna go back to wide receivers. While this is not a full PPR, like I'm gonna get all. I mean, I'm gonna get Amon Ra levels of receptions. I'm still going to take Nico Collins, who I think the big plays can overcome the little bit of a lower reception total. I did bring up in the studio yesterday, I'm kind of uh, I'm softening on Nico and, and Tank Dell just from a consistency standpoint with Diggs' presence. Um, I think Nico, we rode that, I rode that ride all the way to the tippy top, but I still think it's going to be challenging for both of those players to 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 give us what we really want on a weekly basis every single week with Stephon Diggs' target share involvement. I do have a little bit of um, – like I think Nico's a little lower on my board, but I know you love him. So Chase and Nico, a yeah, couple big play guys. He's definitely higher on my board than I think most. Betsy went with Olave next, uh, then Devontae Adams off the board, and then Travis Etienne, which positions me perfectly for um, – see, normally when we're drafting against the computer here, I would tell you what I'm trying to get in the third round. Oh, so we'll we'll put that into the the headspace of uh, the Falcon and Al Borland who pick after me. But this pick is Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs is uh, joining Tyree Kill. Jacobs is. Uh, I posted a, a screenshot of the depth chart yesterday. He is currently the first, second, third, and fourth running back on the Green Bay Packers. So yeah, and you take him as the running back ten which I think is a great spot for him. Um, obviously, I've I've risen on him with the injuries to the backfield. To start the season, at the very least, Josh Jacobs should have the volume. That, uh, hey, oh, man. So, you wanted live people in the mock draft. Okay, here, live. Here's, the, here's the best part, because I think I'm the only person in the world that knows this happened. 
the, the we don't have the video on Deucer's Alley. But when Andy reacted to being sniped, apparently we had the Falcon in Deucer's Alley give him the double. You went the guns? double guns. He went double guns <laughs> right towards. I Andy. turned to him when I saw what he did, and he double gunned me. And I don't <laughs> know if he <laughs> makes that pick if I don't tease it the way I did. You son of a gun. I went Jacobs. Josh Allen went next to Al oh. Borland. Isaiah Pacheco. Good stuff. So here, here's what's going on. The Falcon is trying to hurt us. And oh. That's his best effort. So he goes to Pacheco at 212. Then he comes back with the player I wanted, which was Cooper Cup. I wanted – I think Cooper Cup is worthy of being picked in the second round of a full PPR. So I, I was considering him with Jacobs, but I played the ADP game. He was way down the board. And I got, I, I got burned by the Falcon, who um, – is amazingly here at work today. Drake London goes next to producer Borland, putting me into a fresh situation here. Um, I've got Tyreek and Josh Jacobs. And on the board at wide receiver, I like Metcalf. I think uh, Metcalf is the lead dog there, obviously. Ayuk is the highest by ADP with the, the fears in the back of the mind. Debo is there. If I'm looking elsewhere, not looking at quarterback right now, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with somebody that I think is less fortuitous by way of uh, public opinion, but is the right pick here in a full PPR. I'm taking uh, baby CMC. I'm taking Rashad White at 303 to pair with Jacobs and Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill can serve the role of hero wide receiver for this roster, and uh, I think I'm getting myself a nice 80, 90 receptions with Rashad White. All right. Evans, DJ Moore, and Debo Samuel, three wide receivers go next. The hitman on the clock with Chase and Collins. Yep, and despite the what's going on with the injury fears of Jalen Waddle, if you have not seen, I, I did tweet out about it that I have slightly bumped him down, uh, because of the injury, like he's still in a non-contact jersey, still wearing a sleeve on his left calf, but the actions of the Miami Dolphins are they have five wide receivers on this team right now. And so that – Does that include Odell? No. No. No, Odell's on the, the – when they put Odell on the on the pup, then they, they claimed another guy off of the waiver wire. Someone Grant – uh, yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've never heard but of this guy. It, anyways, to say that I'm going to read into the actions of the Dolphins saying that they are just getting him ready for the season, and I'm still going to take Jalen Waddle. Wow. I can't believe, genuinely, like I thought this lined up perfect, and I, I figured you'd be super happy that, you know, five of the first six picks right before you were wide receivers leaving James Cook, um, one of your if my I, guys. If I, had gone, if I had gone running back, that's where I would have gone. It was Cook 100%. or White for me. Cooker White for me. So um, Mike goes with triple wide receivers. Um, Leaning into the uh, the double flex PPR. And the unavailable currently. Yeah. Waddle, Waddle's yeah, not Ayuk, but I, I, I may mean, I may have Nico Collins only on this roster. Lamar Jackson goes uh, next, and then James Cook off the board to uh, Rapscallion, who has three. Okay, now you're high T. <laughs> when, you hit, when you go three, like the lowercase became yeah. an uppercase T. We've got three running backs. The testosterone is flowing because All you're gonna you're nice. gonna pound the rock. Yeah, three lowercase t's do make one uppercase. Okay, so there you go, Jason. You've got Jefferson and Barkley. Uh, you've got some options here. You could go running back with kind of a below ADP situation for Derrick Henry. Seems like people are nervous to take him in a full PPR. Um, yeah, in a full PPR, that makes sense. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to pull the trigger here on Henry either. Um, there are a couple of players that I really like. I'll just say this, uh, you know, what, what I would love to do here is something I've done for pretty much this whole off season. I would take Jalen Hurts and then I would come back in the beginning of the fourth and, and grab Devonte Smith to get that stack. I like that three, four stack. Kai Borg will have two picks between me. I just said that out loud, and I know you he would, also loves him. You would do that with Barkley on your team? Just go full Eagles? Yeah. Um, here's the nice thing. Better I, than full Saints. I I, I, <laughs> I, I I, don't think I would win. <laughs> full Saints. 
Um, I don't think I would do that with Barkley, but the the truth is, uh, Alvin Kamara is a PPR machine. Um, so when you look at Derrick Henry, who I've got ahead of Kamara, generically speaking, in a PPR, full PPR, Alvin Kamara is the number two target on this offense. I think pairing him, you know, I've got Justin Jefferson and Kamara, who uh, they'll they'll both have a hundred receptions this year. So Jason goes Jefferson, Barkley, Kamara to start his draft. Hertz goes next to Kyle, and Papa Josh goes with Kyler Murray. Goodness gracious! To finish the round, Sam which Laporta. I, nice, Kyle. And then he goes Sam Laporta first, tight end off the board at four hundred one. I I don't mind that price. We're we were worried about you know two nine. No, I don't. Four hundred one is fine. And it's, then Devontae Smith. So Kyle does the stack. Hertz and Smith. It for me the 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 way that Josh handled it would be just of going with two onesies at the turn as he's I mean whatever twenty plus players about to fly off the board and and if you're going to take Kyler Murray that early I would at least correlate with Trey McBride personally so you just you just don't like what what the bald man's doing well let's look at a good thing that the guy with hair did Kyle uh, <laughs> used my strategy he took Jalen Hurts <laughs> and Devontae Smith right there at the the turn got that stack. I love it, but I also love I, – so I, I need a wide receiver. I've only got Justin Jefferson. There are wide receivers on the board I really like, like DK Metcalf. You go high upside with Malik Neighbors. You've got a long wait before your next pick. I love Tank Dell. I'm not going to get any of them um, because truly my quarterback one, assuming this is six point per passing touchdown league, I mean, we, I don't think we have that detail in the mock draft. Um, Mahomes. Mahomes is my number one quarterback. This I think he's going to be – unbelievable and I I don't usually like taking him where he's gone in the last couple of years when he's a second rounder but if I'm getting him fourth if I'm getting him as the fifth quarterback off the board and he's easy to stack with because I can go Xavier Worthy late or Rushy Rice late or you know take shots on players so I uh I haven't drafted him much this offseason but I love the value there in the fourth round well Metcalf goes next uh the reps canyon finally grabs himself a wide receiver and honestly Metcalf as your wide receiver one in the fourth round is not bad. It was a gamble that paid off, I think. Gibbs, A. Chan, and Cook are a powerful trifecta. Um, we've got Kelsey off the board at 405, three picks after Laporta, and then Mike is back on the board. Now, Mike, I do want to make sure you understand Ayuk is still available to you if you want I do see to that. rebuild um, your dynasty opportunities. I, I do see that, and if I just want to add on guys who will not be available week one, so, right, Jalen Waddle, yeah. Jamar Chase. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do? Uh, so it is. this one is a tougher decision for me. Ken Bone Walker made it back to me, uh, and I have I have him still projected to be a uh, top 10 running back. PPR could be not as great. He was only an 8% target share player the last year. However, uh, new, o, uh, new OC – Mr. Grubb up there has been talking about Walker as a three-down running back. That doesn't mean that it'll happen, but at least it is being talked about. If we got to get these these running backs catching some more passes, and pe but passing on Trey McBride here would be pretty tough. The, the tight ends are about to the run will happen, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to take Trey McBride and and bank on his connection with Kyler to put him up over 80, maybe 90 receptions. I I'm surprised. I'm surprised that wasn't Ken Walker. Yeah. Uh, McBride off the board. Malik Neighbors went at 407. I was kind of uh, – I was dreaming of Malik Neighbors there with my 410. Didn't get back to me. Betsy took him, and uh, that puts um, that puts Brooks in the driver's seat here. He goes Michael Pittman and then digs off the board at 409, which uh, means I have Tyreek, Josh Jacobs, Rashad White – We'll take a quick break, and then I'll come back and let you know who I'm taking. All right. Um, full PPR, two flex, Tyreek in the first, Jacobs and Rashad White in the next two rounds. If I didn't have those two running backs, I think it would be Ken Walker for me here. Um, or, or you know, there's some good running backs available. They've They've kind of slipped down the – the board with the full PPR, but I am actually going to turn right back to the wide receiver position. And, uh, you know, we got news about him this morning. I'm going to put Rashi Rice on this roster. You son of a... 
<laughs> turkey. I thought he was making it all the way back to the I totally five, thought he would make it crazy. back to me. No, I mean, it, so Rushy Rice is really, really interesting in drafts right now because where he is in, in average draft position is you got to scroll. You, you need to scroll for him. If you've got your draft coming up this weekend, like a fourth round pick, 410. I I don't have any problem with it. I, I really wanted to pair him with with Mahomes. He's his average draft position is probably closer to the seventh round than the fourth. Like you you reach pretty far for Rushy, but if you just look He's at what he can up. do, um, you're going to need to take him before you think you need to take him if you want him in your draft. Uh, stupid pick. Thank you, you're thank welcome. you. I always like to hear that. Uh, after Rashi Rice, we got Tank Dell off the board. Mark Andrews at four twelve, and then Brandon Ayuk finally comes that off. That could be an unbelievable value. No question. Ken Walker does go at 502, probably just to make sure I didn't get him. Uh, let him sneak through. But Al Borland uh, puts him as his RB2 with CMC. Looking pretty good there. At this point, uh, kind of a ridiculous level of value here. So I'm going to take Derrick Henry at 503. Uh, I don't, you know, we play half PPR a lot of the time. I'm not going to let full PPR dissuade me from potentially 15 touchdowns. Right. Uh, so I'm going to take, you know, oh, three workhorse backs with Jacobs, White, and Henry. Feeling pretty good. Rice and Tyreek as my wideouts. Yeah, All that's, right. that's more real T. Yeah. Yeah. That's like that font change. It's a much larger oh. T than Is any it other bold? font. It's bolded. Yeah. All right. Stroud off the board at 504, Mixon, and then Kincaid. Kincaid off the board at 506. That was the only real player I thought about at 503 over that was, Henry. That was who I was targeting to hopefully get to me. I know uh, the Hitman and Team 8 already have their tight ends, so if he got past Betts, pretty good chance to get to me, and I would have taken him there at the back of the fifth. Well, boys, the plan is working. Jamar Ch Oh, no. Oh, gosh. <laughs> is it, though? It, it it was that was a quick change. Well, yeah, because it was like I had deleted Jamar, and I'm like, yeah, baby, T Higgins is dropping to me. This is perfection. <laughs> and then I'm like, eh, do I really want to overload on the Bengals like that? Just get Burrow and stack with Chase. Like when you're trying to host a show and you lose track of your team, some bad things. You can happen just there. drew attention to Jason having Saquon yeah, and I, maybe not wanting Jalen Hurts. And, and I Monte. I almost did it. Uh, so so you have Chase Collins, well, Waddle, and McBride. Man, and I, no running back. I really wanted to go T. Higgins right there. So at the running back position, ADP wise, Jones, Swift, uh, James Conner is there. He's probably the pick if I'm going to go at the running back. Let me peek real quick at the quarterbacks. Richardson presenting at least a little bit of a value right now with the other quarterbacks that have gone. Burrow, Prescott. I'm gonna. I'm just going to take old man James Conner, be my anchor running back here right in the fifth. All right, so you went back to back Cardinals, yeah. uh, McBride and Connor yeah. in the. Which I, I, I had the Connor. I am okay with that stack, by the way. I had the Connor Ramondre decision yesterday in our listener league where he was going to be my RB one, one of those two guys. I went with Ramondre, but it was close, and you went with Connor here. Probably Connor a. I mean, they're. I guess they're both probably the same value in a full PPR, no, but I, Connor is probably a little better there. No, I I would think Ramondre would be the the one to receive more passes this I, season. I, I, with Gibson there and and Connor not having an alternate right now in the passing game, I kind of went the other way. Touchdowns, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I do think Connor has more touchdowns than Ramondre. That is that is. But fair. yeah, Ramondre did have a prolific receiving year before, so we'll find out. Um, Flowers and Higgins go next out of the AFC North, and then Jason on the clock with Jefferson, Barkley, Kamara. Mahomes and another there, player. Yeah, I mean, right now with Mahomes, Kamara, Barkley, and only Justin Jefferson at a full PPR as a wide receiver, I'm I'm looking towards the wide receiver. And honestly, like there are a lot of wide receivers I like here. Um, if if four if all four picks from now until the next one come, there's still wide receivers I like. Because of that, like I had queued up guys a little bit lower. But because there are still going to be guys for my next pick at wide receiver I like, I'm going to take the shot on someone I haven't – I have not unloaded a, a single bullet out of the uh, gun this year for George Pickens. But I – you know, Ayuk has dropped Pickens so far. Right. 
And if Ayuk does not go, which it seems like right now, you I can't imagine that trade getting done. It it, it could get done as I speak. <laughs> but um, right as it stands, George Pickens is the clear number one target without really a solid number two. I mean, I'm making the case, you know, for Pat Fryermuth to be the number two target in this offense. And if that's your competition for targets, um, Pickens should be good this season, especially at this value in the back of the fifth. All right. We have Montgomery and Cooper rounding out the fifth round. McLaurin goes at 601 to Papa Josh, who still has no running backs. Um, the smallest T imaginable. Keep it going. Keep Which, it going, Josh. Honestly, with age, you lose testosterone, yeah. so it makes sense. Um, Chris Godwin goes next at 602. Jason back on the clock. Jefferson and Pickens at wide out. Barkley and Kamara at running back, and Mahomes is your quarterback. Yeah, so I was um, I was between two players left. after Amari Cooper and Terry McLaurin were on my queue. Uh, love both of those picks at, at the turn there, Josh. Um, and then there were two wide receivers left for me, Calvin Ridley and Xavier Worthy. Uh, to stack with Mahomes, it, it, I would love to have that stack, but I'm not going to take the unknown rookie who I think is, you know, at, at best right now the the wide receiver three on his team over Calvin Ridley, who should be um, a PPR machine. Calvin Ridley at six oh three. Joe Burrow goes next, so uh, that's out of out of uh, contention mm. for Mike to stack with Chase, but he does get the. Rapscallion, Higgins, Burrow, and the fifth and sixth round combination, which is very nice. Very that nice. was honestly the that was the plan. Like before, I had forgotten that I drafted Jamar. It was going to be Higgins there and hope that Burrow sneaks back to get that. I've I've done that a few times now in drafts, and it's always felt good, real good. Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's and it looks you know sometimes the vibes got to be on. Uh, so I'm back on the clock here. Uh. I have two Cardinals. I don't know if I want to then super stack another team because of uh, Raheem Mostert. I think is a just a fantastic running back pick here. But for my build, I don't know if I want to go that direction. So I'm going to uh, pivot. And Tony Pollard is slightly higher than Mostert in my rankings. the 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 preseason usage has been very encouraging. Tony Pollard is a pass catching specialist. We'll see if that works out. All right. Well, this was going to be my pick if he slipped to me, but he, he didn't. Uh, Richardson finally goes at 607. Uh, Anthony, you've talked to Anthony Richardson down to people to a place where now he's. <laughs> it's just, I. it's insane. Like, I, he, okay, listener league, super flex. We did the draft yesterday. I took Richardson. Like, as your quarterback, too. It's about it was like QB ten. He, he was the QB ten, which yeah. is a which is where he should be going. Like if you look at his his week one lines on sleeper picks, you know, and you remind yourself of how fantasy scoring is, you've got him down with forty five and a half rushing yards. That's his line for week one with two hundred and thirteen passing yards. That would be a, co a combined three hundred and twenty seven passing yardage for just total fantasy value. That's his week one line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. Um Tremendous value there in the right spot. And that's what all of our – every discussion we have about every player is about what is the cost versus the return. Kittle and Pitts go next, and I'm actually going tight end as well. This is one of my favorite players to take in general. Definitely my favorite yeah, in a full PPR. Sure. And thrilled to get him. Uh, Evan Ingram, adding him to the roster. I think Evan Ingram could have a – I think he is a tight end that can finish at one. I think Evan Ingram can finish wow. at one overall. Wow. that was so, so I was about to be echoing most everything you said until you said that Full nonsense. Stop. Full stop. <laughs> but, but genuinely, I mean, you're, like – You're talking about – he was the wire, he was the tight end two last year. This is not a great leap. Tight he's end just he's never was been way down last year, and he's never been a touchdown guy. I it, don't. If scoring's way down again, then he can do it. That's all I'm sure. saying is like, yeah, yes, he's never been a touchdown guy. But what if? Like, what if he caught six? I mean, he's if he caught six, he's the he's the tight end one last year. I will say in a full PPR, I would I I think I would rather have Evan Ingram over Kittle and Pitts. He he's going to catch nonstop worthless passes and you've you've looked at the situation and you you've lost Ridley and Kirk was injured he's back now um you've lost Zay Jones you want to talk about who's there with a rapport Kirk and Ingram mm -hmm. not Brian Thomas yet Mostert goes next 
Dak at 612. Stevenson off the board to start the seventh round. I think that's really good value um, on a starter there. He goes behind Aaron Jones. He goes behind Pollard and Mostert. Jaden Reed goes next at 702. And uh, I am back on the clock with Tyreek and Rice at wide receiver, Jacobs, White, and Henry at running back, and Ingram at tight end. I am I'm keeping my eyes on the wide receiver spot right now. And even though even though he is aged, I think a seventh round Keenan Allen is appropriate here yes. in a full PPR. So I will take Keenan Allen in Keenan the seventh Allen round. Would have been my pick if he had dropped to me. And you take him over teammate Rome Adunze, who went right after. Now you've spoken highly of Adunze as having potential and not being a bad pick. We you know, I've been more negative on the rookie rookie combination behind two great vets. But it was interesting to me that you chose Keenan over Odunze. Yeah, I would say that Odunze fits the mold of uh, the kind of pick. If I can take Thomas or Rome or some of these rookies late where they're not having to start for me from week one, those are that's the upside I have with Odunze or Brian Thomas. If I have to start them on week one, especially in a full PPR, I'm willing to go Keenan where the first half of the year I think is going to be fairly solid. Um, that would be the differentiator to me. But I think Rome has the ability to emerge over the course of the year. It's been a run of wide receivers. Kirk, Worthy, and Mike back on the clock. So uh, my – other than quarterback, I'm you know, I'm, I'm pretty close to positionally filled here. I just need one more flex. But we're – so like at this point in the draft, because I, I feel confident in the guys that I've got to be my core, this is pretty much an all-upside pick for the, the remainder of the draft for me. And so like Lad McConkey, Keon Cole, the rookies, uh, you know, Coleman, even Brian Thomas, uh, then the Jackson Smith and Jigba is in strong contention here. With it being PPR, I'm, I'm gonna go Deontay Johnson. I'm gonna I'm gonna trust in the uh the upgraded quarterback play for Bryce Young with Canales being there and Deontay Johnson being his ex wide receiver and knowing that touchdowns could be a struggle but looking at what Adam Thielen was able to do at, at the beginning of the season last year if Deontay is anything close to that or, which I think he could be the whole season it could be a PPR nightmare for my opponents all right we uh we got Five and a half rounds left. Jason back on the clock. McConkey and Swift win after Mike. And now, Jason, it is your opportunity to make the correct pick. Um, I, You know, I was going to take um, David Njoku here, but there's two tight ends I like, only one player that doesn't have a tight end left. So I'm fine if I go with the other one. Najee Harris sitting here, when I've only got Barkley and Kamara, he is a solid player. He's never not finished as an RB2 there's already 24 running backs off the board, so even though I've got Pickens, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna grab Najee Harris. Uh, I just think it's a perfect depth here if you're getting him at the seven eight turn. Well, uh, started a little running back run: Javante, Zamir White, Zach Moss. So wow. Josh has his two starters, which Zamir White is, and Zach Moss in the seventh and eighth. That's great. Yeah, it's it's sketchy for sure, but that could work out and tremendously. Then JSN goes at eight oh two, putting Jason back on the clock. And I will take David Njoku, who in a full PPR, I think he could be really, really involved in that offense as well. It's a good gamble. Good gamble with Njoku. Still get him. And then uh, that puts Rapscallion back on the clock, who started Gibbs, A. Chan, and Cook, and ends up Metcalf, Higgins, McConkey at wide receiver. And then Joe Burrow at quarterback. He ends up going Bowers, which I think is uh, that's that's my most exciting late tight end pick to make. Sure. And then Chubb, who will start on the pup, goes to team eight, can throw him on the IR and sign somebody. Mike, you're back on the clock. We're going to believe in science here, boys. We're going to hope that the medical teams have fixed Christian Watson's hamstring. That's my favorite comment is that <laughs> it's now being reported they did fix. Hey. Oh, really? It's they been fixed reported it? that it's been fixed. Oh, yeah. We have, yeah. That's we great news. Zero games of proof that it's fixed, but it is apparently fixed. Well, that's great news because I – believe that if everyone is on the field you know I like all the Packers wide receivers but if everyone is there and ready to go I think Christian Watson is the one well we'll find out Mike we'll find out if he can hold up yeah we will 
Brian Thomas and Keon Coleman go. A little disappointing. I was targeting Thomas in the eighth round here, but Betsy wouldn't let that happen. Um, thought about going quarterback after my Keenan pick. I have some guys I like, but I, I guess I guess I will go quarterback because I've not taken this player in any draft. But at eight ten, I'm going to go Jordan Love. Okay, I don't mind it. So that puts Al Borland back on the clock. Love my quarterback. And, um, you know, the upside was on the field and on display last year from Jordan Love. He was arguably the NFL MVP, at you know, as a quarterback over the second half of the year. So I'm I'm going to give it a go. Brian Robinson and Jalen Warren rounding out the eighth round. Sutton starts the ninth. Sutton is one of the most ignored players yeah. in all of fantasy. And yet they are, you know, they cut Tim Patrick and they, you know, they don't. It's being reported that Troy Franklin won't even have a role as a rookie. And then Marvin Mims is supposed to be a full-time player. And Josh Reynolds arrives. Like, Sutton is the only proven commodity there. So. Yeah, it's it's really hard. He is the clear-cut number one, but it's it's really, really hard to trust a guy. I mean, Corlin Sutton hasn't been good for fantasy since his sophomore season, which was five years ago. He was, you know, the wide receiver 35 last year, 43, 46 the, the last three years. And with a rookie coming in, it's just hard to believe in him. Makes sense. Um, I am going to go ahead and pull the trigger here on a full-time starter on a stinky offense. Uh, it's Devin Singletary. I'm going to take him in the ninth round, just add some depth to the running back room. We're, we're starting to flex. And so if I'm deciding on a, a kind of backup versus a starter, the two flex talks me into the starter with Singletary. Addison goes next, then Tua. Oh, bets, you snake. And then Chase <laughs> Brown off the board. Mike, not happy with that. Um, he will have to chase a different running back. Yeah, Chase Brown was easily the pick for me right there. Um, he was also your pick, I believe, in the listener league. Did you yep, get Chase uh, Brown? Yep. Yeah. yeah, I do. I, I mean, it's it's following the it's following my research of I want running backs from those teams. So I'm just going to scan the running backs real quick of Spears. I don't know that – I don't want to have Pollard and Spears. Benson – you know, I could have my insurance policy here for, for James Conner, Corum, uh, but Jerome Ford is a starting running back, and he, he might only have one leg, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm going to, because I didn't get Chase Brown, I'm going to get a player from the Chargers. I'm going to go Dobbins. I can't believe I you I can't took, believe you passed on Jerome Ford. That's the, I mean, Jerome, I was looking at your team, I was like, oh, Jerome Ford, man, just fell in your lap. You've only got two running backs. Yeah. He's because, the starter. You've talked him up all off season, and you're like, nah. That was also him. Dobbins over Edwards. Yeah, that because that's the PPR factor. Uh, of If I'm in a half, I would have easily gone Gus. Uh, but, like, Jerome Ford, theoretically, like, he's a, he's a it, it's a Band-Aid. And I'm looking at full season long of – like, he hopefully would not crack my lineup with Connor and Pollard. Yeah, uh, th this is a really easy pick for me. In a full PPR, I I actually have Tajay Spears just neck and neck with Tony Pollard. Um, this is a guy who – You liked all those snaps he was getting? I, I liked the snaps of preseason. Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah he – he he spent one game going literally the second snap of the game, and then they shared drives. He is the the one B yeah. there, and he is I think the better pass catcher. He had fifty two receptions as a rookie, so on a full PPR, um, e easy pick for me here. All right, all right, uh, Jamison Williams off the board, then Jerome Ford. Uh, talk about a just Josh perfect finish for Papa Josh. Josh has executed the zero RB, wow, as well as you can, and I, yeah. you know. When you get to take back-to-back -back picks, that can be very helpful. Sure. When you are executing a strategy like that, because you have the opportunity to pile them up. And White, Moss, and Ford, dude. I mean, and Dowdle now. White, Moss, Ford, and Dowdle in a zero RB at the end. That's the. Yeah, I mean, that feels good, and it feels so bad saying something nice about Papa Josh. It does. Like I don't even want to talk about it because gross. But uh, man, good job. Well, I good mean, job, Team Twelve. Yeah, I mean, what do they say about wine? Right. Yeah. It gets um, grosser, grosser all the time. <laughs> Ferguson goes next. Jason back on the clock after the Spears pick. Uh, I'm looking at the, the options here and, and in a full PPR. Curtis Samuel very well could be the wide receiver one target on this team. So, it, you know, in the 10th, I'm happy about it. Curtis Samuel's the pick. Romeo Dobbs and Hopkins go next. I was eyeballing Hopkins. Like, people – in our listener league, let him go so far. He he is likely to play week one, and he's not DeAndre Hopkins of old. 
But we're sitting here where people are talking about, oh my gosh, we're going to take, you know, every single option on some of these better offenses. I like Will Levis. So Hopkins is interesting. Mike, you're on the clock after the Dobbins pick. You are in need of a quarterback yeah, they, within the next three picks. And that's that's where I'm looking. And I don't know if any of these snakes would double up just to take the shot on Jaden Daniels, but I there's no one else that I love on the board, so I'm not even going to risk yeah, it. Yeah, why? Yeah, there's no reason to risk. And, and Jaden Daniels in the 10th, for anyone that had a quarterback, still would have been a good pick. Yeah, that, that's, why, that's have, why I'm not going to risk it. It would have crossed my mind at some point. And, um, ah, yes, the Falcon was going to take him. Blake Corum goes next, adding to the three consecutive rounds in which Matthew Betts has stolen somebody from Mike or myself. <laughs> uh, Brooks is on the clock. He went to a last round as his quarterback and goes Trey Benson as his third running back. And then Caleb Williams off the board at 10.09. Williams is a great – like, if your draft is just punting Caleb Williams, I I think Williams fits the mold of that. Throw him on your team with the last or second to last pick as a second quarterback. See what you got. The way people drafted Anthony Richardson last year with basically the last pick. Mm -hmm. See what the rookie has in week one with amazing weapons. Uh, I went Singletary last round. I'm going to come back here and um, – you know, there's a couple starters left on the board. I guess I'll take Zeke here and just see if he's the guy, the touchdown guy in Dallas, which, uh, look, nobody wants to take Zeke. We saw that in the listener league no. yesterday. I, I kept kicking it down. I kept saying, next round, I guess I'm yeah. willing to. And then it was like, ah, oh, next round, maybe I'm willing to. But he very well could come out and be the bell cow. So Don't draft a boat. Yeah, uh, James pa uh, Joshua Palmer, Jalen Wright, Khalil Shakir off the board. Al Borland goes Hawkinson, uh, which is Ooh, a good gamble in okay. the 11th round, and that brings it back to you me. You find a start, you know, starting tight end. Well, the nice thing about that, so Hawkinson's fallen to a place where I – so I took him in the listener league as my uh, tight end too because you just – as soon as the draft is over, if you've got an IR, throw him on your IR, and you get a right. free extra pick. Well, I am uh, I'm attempting to draft Adonai Mitchell, I promise. I, uh, I clicked the button. Nothing happened. Hit the refresh. There we go. Hey. Adonai Mitchell off the board. A lot of great reports about Adonai Mitchell right now. Josh Downs is injured. He's pushed Alec Pierce off the field and too wide on several uh, opportunities. So Mitchell will have a quick opportunity there to – like I'm curious how you guys view Mitchell in context of Michael Pittman because Pittman is very reliable, mm -hmm. but there's nothing about Pittman's game that is kind of explosive and exceptional. In my opinion, he's just a great – I kind of look at him like Higgins, maybe, you know, sure. he, where where maybe there's an opportunity if Richardson hits for somebody to come and be the athletic uh, alpha, if he's the kind of tried and true alpha. The I don't mind it here in the 11th. My concerns are just they're, they're Josh Downs related. I know he's hurt right now. Sure. But when he comes back, I expect that Josh Downs goes right back into being a full-time player and then does – It's funny to think and about – And then is there enough volume? Jason Adonai. didn't like Josh Downs, mm -hmm. and he went to the Colts. Mm -hmm. And he didn't like Adonai Mitchell, mm -hmm. who also went to the Colts. I wonder if you and uh, – what is it? Uh, who's their general manager? His name's escaping me for uh, the Colts. Uh, uh, the, uh, Colts someone team. help me out oh here. Oh, my Chris gosh. Ballard. Ballard. Yes, I knew it was a B. Um, maybe you and him are kind of like opposite takes. Maybe Not you guys you, scout – like he. you put the film on upside down, he puts it on regular. <laughs> Not usually. I, I think Ballard and I are usually in sync. I like a lot of uh, their Did you see they picks. cut their fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks? No, I didn't. That's not a great sign of drafting. Mm -hmm. Well, you were, yeah, maybe like this year's fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks. Didn't you just say the GM was watching the film right side up? Yeah. I, are you supposed to go upside down? If you're if you're cutting that many people from your draft, yeah, you're watching the wrong footage. All right, Mike went with Jared Goff to stack with Daniel, something he likes to do, and then Jason back on the clock. Uh, at this point, I I like my wide receivers, and I think there's good depth. I like my running backs. I think there's good depth. So I'm only looking for upside. I'm looking for someone that can come out and just shock and be great. I'm going to take uh, Xavier Leggett and hope that his mammoth body – and unbelievable production as a 20th year college player, uh, you know, is is out there week one. Fun fact, Josh, is one year younger than Xavier Leggett. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lockett goes in the 11th round, followed by Jermaine Burton. Mason goes at 12-0-2. Mason is a great pick that people need to star and put on there. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's going to be super low in ADP. 
Uh, I'm going to take a guy I often take at the very end, Ontavian Wicks, and hope that his talent gets on the field because if he's on the field, he does great things for the Packers. All right. Well, uh, that means Dalton Schultz is a 12th round pick here for Team 8. And Mike is closing things out. Throw one more guy in your so, roster, Mike. Yeah, looking at my team, I only have the three running backs. I got my two starters and then J.K. Dobbins for some upside. Let's take some more PPR action. I'll take Jaleel McLaughlin. Great, great pick. Uh, I got him in the second to last round of our listener league, and he's somebody that you can start in a pinch because he will have a role. You were talking about standalone value. Yes. He will have a role. Uh, my final pick is between two names, and I'll say it really quickly here. I've been taking Jerry Judy with the last pick of almost every draft. I feel like you said that normal. What did I say? I I was you said you were going to say it really quickly, and I was excited to see how you would oh, how say fast, this. Like yeah. micro machine. No, yeah, like, like Jerry Judy. Well, and now, you're, now it's taking a lot longer. I'm take you know Jerry what I mean? And the run. Don't forget that people were all about Elijah Moore in drafts last year as a second option in the offense. You know, People wanted to make a big deal about Elijah Moore with Deshaun Watson. Jerry Judy is a much much better wide receiver well, we than know Elijah that Moore. now and uh well we knew I knew hey I knew that a long time ago with Elijah Moore for the record um but I'm actually going to go with Ricky Pearsall because if yeah. something happens yeah. with Ayuk he's a great you talk about starring a name for your last round you could be in a situation five days from now after the weekend where Ayuk is not a member of this franchise and Ricky Pearsall has an important role in a team that is such an effective offense First round the last draft pick. pick. Yeah, I mean, there's a first round pick that they believe in. So that will wrap up the vicious fantasy footballers in-house draft. I didn't forget what you did. Falcon, <laughs> you took a dump on my uh, target of Cooper Cup in the third round. But if you want to see the entire draft board, go to YouTube. Check out the draft board there. And uh, any any final takeaways? I'll, I'll read my team real quick. Uh, Tyreek. Rashi Rice, Keenan Allen, Mitchell, and Pearsall at wide receiver. Jacobs, White, Henry, Singletary, and Zeke at running back with Jordan Love and Evan Ingram as my onesies. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how mine turned out. My wide receiver core is Justin Jefferson, George Pickens, Calvin Ridley, Curtis Samuel, Xavier Leggett, and Dontavian Wicks. At running back, I've got Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Najee Harris, and Tajay Spears. And then I've got Mahomes and David Njoku, Locking down my onesies. I've got Jamar Chase, Nico Collins, Jalen Waddle, Deontay Johnson, Christian Watson at running back, James Conner, Tony Pollard, J.K. Dobbins, Jaleel McLaughlin. Then I got my guy, Trey McBride, anchoring down the tight end position, Jaden Daniels and Jared Goff with the double tap at quarterback. I think the my only regret is not fully not, not playing the draft board of letting Josh get Jerome Ford. If like I I could have gone Ford there and you would have gotten I Dobbins he, on the way I back. Think, I think I would have got Dobbins on the way back. I was ner more nervous about Jason taking Dobbins with one of those picks and not factoring in Josh enough. And just just to create some inner office turmoil, my favorite three teams that aren't our teams, Papa Josh, Rapscallion, and Matthew Betts are my favorite three other teams, certainly uh, not the other guys at all. So um, <laughs> is how I like to put that. So, yeah, it worked out well for Josh to punt the running back position. It actually worked out for both. Like, it was like an inverse situation for the Rapscallion and Papa Josh where yeah. one went heavy wideouts, one went heavy running backs, and it worked out for both of them. Yeah, one so, is old, one is young, one has hair, one has v Ryle, V-Ryle, yeah. high T, low T. Yeah, we got it all. All right, um, that is going to do it for today. If you didn't know, in addition to being the number one fantasy platform, Sleeper also has DFS picks. Download the app now. Use the promo code BALLERS, Ballers. to get a 100% deposit match. Never said it like that before. Uh, terms and conditions apply. We've got uh, we've got a very big episode tomorrow. Mm -hmm. MVP. The Fantasy MVP Show. Not only will we debut our fantasy MVPs for the 2024 NFL season, but we will have several special guests on the show to reveal their fantasy MVPs. So a bunch of very big names to factor into your drafts this weekend. And uh, we'll plant some flags and we'll have a lot of fun. More undrafted gyms next week, mailbag questions, and we will be breaking down our first matchup of 2024, which means next week is it's going to be football time. 
It's going to be football oh. time. So do not miss it. And do not miss your Megala Bowl draft. Go to megalobowl.com. Come compete with us and over 15,000 other Foot Clan players. Megalobowl.com right now while you can. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.